The simplest way to start using the new HTML5 semantic tags, such as article, section and nav, is to use one of the predefined layouts in the new document dialog box. By the way, in this and all future lessons, I'll be using the Video to Brain workspace specially configured for this course. Feel free to use whichever workspace layout you're most comfortable with. To use one of the predefined layouts, select the File menu and New to open the New Document dialog box. Make sure the blank page is selected and the page type is HTML. And right down at the bottom of the Layout column, you've got two predefined HTML5 layouts. One of them is two columns with all the widths fixed in pixels with a right sidebar, header and footer. The other one is three columns with fixed widths with a header and footer and sidebars on both sides. I'm going to select the two column one. Now you notice that the doc type is set to HTML5 and layout CSS is set to add to head. You've got the option of creating a new file for the CSS or linking to an existing file. What I'm going to do for this demonstration is to put the CSS in the head because you can always move it later. So just click create. And this is the predefined layout. If you click the split view button and open the page, you can see that it uses header, nav, aside, all the HTML5 semantic tags. Let's just go back to design view. Now you may not want to have the sidebar on the right hand side, but it's very easy to move. Just click somewhere in the sidebar, then select div sidebar one in the tag selector at the bottom of the document window. And here in the CSS styles panel, you can see that it says float right. Click in the value and select left. And bingo, there we are. The sidebar has been moved to the left hand side. Now you might be wondering why it's div sidebar and not a side sidebar. The point is that the HTML5 specification encourages the use of semantic tags in preference to div tags, but it doesn't ban them. It says that div elements can be used for stylistic purposes or to wrap multiple paragraphs within a section that are all to be treated in a similar way. And what has happened here, if we look in split view, is that we have the div and inside the div we've got a nav element and an aside element. So the div is holding the two together. Now let's take a look at the CSS in the head of the document. Notice here that header is a selector. It's a tag or type selector used in exactly the same way as you would do for p or for div with HTML4 elements. So the new semantic tags can be used in CSS as selectors in exactly the same way as with HTML4. The CSS in the predefined layouts is very heavily commented. And the idea of this is to explain to you how to use the new semantic tags and how to use CSS with them. The idea is to help you understand the structure so you can customize it to your own tastes and needs. Now, if we go down to the bottom of the style section, you'll see here on line 108, this style rule is for the new semantic elements and it sets them to display as block. Now in the latest browsers, they do actually display as blocks. The idea for this is to support older browsers. And if you look immediately below that line, you'll see that immediately below that is an Internet Explorer conditional comment. This is for browsers older than Internet Explorer 9, because they don't recognize any of the new semantic tags. They need a little bit of JavaScript encouragement to be able to style the semantic tags. If you don't have this, what happens is that older versions of Internet Explorer fail to style any of the new semantic tags, and as a result, your page looks a complete mess. This conditional comment is so useful, I suggest that you save it as a snippet. So with it selected, right-click and then choose Create New Snippet from the context menu. And in the Snippets panel, give it a name such as IE6 to 8 HTML5. It's a block, so select the Insert Block Radio button and then just click OK. And that's now stored in your Snippets panel, as you can see here, IE6 to 8 HTML5, and that can be used any time that you create a page that you want to display using the semantic tags. 
and it'll ensure that semantic tags are displayed properly and styled properly in older versions of Internet Explorer. Because it's an Internet Explorer conditional comment, it won't be seen by any other browser, so there's nothing to worry about there. Let's just close the snippets panel. Now, as you saw before, there's a rather large amount of comments in the CSS. It's very useful for learning purposes, but probably when you want to deploy a page, you want to get rid of it. Now, I've created a saved query, which you can use in Dreamweaver's Find and Replace to get rid of these CSS comments in a single stroke. Go to Edit, Find and Replace. Alternatively, press Control F on Windows or Command F on a Mac to open the Find and Replace dialog box. And then click the folder icon on the right hand side. As you see, it's got a tooltip which says Load Query. And then navigate to the folder for this lesson. and select Scrub CSS Comments DWR. DWR is the file name extension which Dreamweaver gives to saved queries. Select that and click Open. And what it does is it loads into the Find and Replace dialog box what's called a regular expression. This is a text pattern that matches CSS comments and replaces them with nothing. Click Replace All and it rushes through and removes all the comments. You can see the results of the Find and Replace search here in the Results panel. Right-click the bar and close the tab group. And you can see that all the comments have been removed from the CSS styles. One thing that you need to be careful of is it removes all CSS comments. So if there are any comments that you want to keep, don't use Replace All, but go through them one by one and replace only those that you want to get rid of. So there we have it, one of the HTML5 predefined layouts in Dreamweaver CS55. They certainly give you a head start, but they're very limited. Although they use the HTML5 semantic tags, there's no obvious way to add new ones of your own, except by working directly in the HTML code. There's also the danger that some visitors to your site will be using an old version of Internet Explorer with JavaScript disabled. For that admittedly small minority, your pages will look a mess.